Well, I think we may be live. So hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Lynn Weems, and I'm coming to you from a different kind of better clinic which is part of a different kind of better on Facebook. And today I'm really excited because I get to honor and speak to a chiropractor that totally impresses me. Um, and I have to say, I've known Doug for quite a few years because I've worked in natural therapies and he sort of helped me along the way in that area. So thank you for that. This is Dr. Doug Pooley, and he comes to you from Care Chiropractic in St. Thomas, Ontario, the town with the beautiful metallic train on the roundabout. Um, if you haven't seen it, you need to go. It's a piece of art. But he runs a very busy chiropractic office, and uh, he has some very highly specialized equipment in it that we're going to touch base on today. But... What do you know about um, Dr. Pooley is that he has been a chiropractor since 1978. I hope I've got that correct. You do, and, thank you. Um, because he sees so many patients, I would say that he is an expert, right? And uh, you know, the longer you do something, the better you be become. And the one thing I love about Dr. Pooley is that he actually is always in learning mode. And that is something that really impresses me. When we have a practitioner that knows, you know, you come out of school and you have this much education, but if you keep going, you just keep better. You keep augmenting the skills that you already have. And that's one thing I've loved about you, Doug. Um, Dr. Pooley, I'll try and keep it professional. This Doug is fine, thanks. Is, is that um, you're constantly staying up to date. And I think that's really important in today's age, right? Do you agree? It is a hundred percent. I mean, you have to stay current because there's no such thing as current, actually. It's always moving so fast. I mean, the exchange of information these days and the new advancements that are coming in all professions are so astoundingly quick that just trying to stay current is a job in itself. Absolutely. It's almost a, it's almost a full-time job, isn't it? <laughs> it can be someday. It certainly could be, exactly. But I think some of us are just so um, tuned into never being done school, right? I think I think it also almost becomes an addiction in some ways. I've got a hair here, so bear with me. Um, so anyway, um, Dr. Pooley has was elected Ontario Chiropractic Association president. So he, you know, that's a pretty prestigious uh, position to have held. So, so proud of you there. You co-authored the Back Care Manual Back to Back. Um, with Dr. David Matheson. I hope I'm pronouncing that right mm -hmm, for you too. Correct. Um, you've been chairman of the board of CCA. Um, you've um, had the chiropractor of the year for the province of Ontario. Good for you. That's so exciting. And you've been a chiropractic consultant for Canadian Living Magazine. So that must have been really exciting as well. So I have some questions for you today. And Please. so we'll try and um, let's teach some people some things about chiropractic and also about this new technology that you have in your office and it's which i'm so excited to share with people so as a practicing chiropractor of over 40 years and thank Correct. you for sharing that and being honest about it what changes have you seen in added attitude towards healthcare over the years healthcare is a very different animal now than it was 40 years ago when i first started practice there were very few trips to the doctor's office, very few lines in emergency rooms. People essentially understood that a, a lot of small conditions or a lot of the conditions that we kind of accept as requiring medical intervention were kind of well taken care of at home. Um, back then, there was very few people on prescription medication. Operations of any sort were a bit of a rarity. And if we trip fast forward to today, it's a whole different world, isn't it? There's no real personal accountability when it comes to healthcare. Everybody wants a quick fix. Um, the average person over the age of 45 is on at least one medication. If you're over the age of 65, it's often two or more medications. So there's not a lot of personal accountability and not a lot of um, individual accountability when it comes to healthcare anymore. Yeah, I, I've definitely noticed that myself because uh, I will admit I've been in the healthcare field for many years as well. 
So I definitely do see that. So, you know, over the years, we've seen some animosity towards, you know, the medical profession and um, I'd like to say alternative healthcare, but uh, holistic types of healthcare. There's, there's been some sort of animosity in with them working together as a whole, which is a shame, right? I, I, I really wish it were different. But do you ever see the two sides of this actually coming together? Um, I know that Dr. Tom and I are definitely attempting to do that now. And, and I mean, we're so close and we really know each other well, but we'd like to see more of that. So what's your feelings on that? Well, I think in some ways that the, the general prof healthcare prof professions are working more closely with each other. And yet in some respects, there is probably, probably greater division now than there has been ever before in my practice life anyway. Um, I think that generally medical doctors kind of understand that chiropractors have a role to play. Um, they're just not exactly sure what that role should be. They understand we have a role in healthcare when it comes to the treatment of back and neck pain. But other than that, they really don't identify chiropractic with, within their scope, certainly. Um, I think that you'll find that the my profession is much more accepting of the broader scope of what healthcare delivery should be. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with financial gain. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I think that it's called the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. And I think that it's a matter of control and it's a matter of um, influence. And I think that going forward, especially, I think that you may find that you may see even greater splits within the individual professions simply because of the fact that Chiropractic has always been based upon a little bit more of a holistic and certainly a more natural approach to health, approach to healthcare, taking into consideration the body's own natural ability to heal. And I think as I, I just kind of alluded in the previous statement that we were talking about where's healthcare going, that more traditional medical approach to healthcare is, I think, a little bit more all the time becoming involved with more medications and more interventions. And so I think that there is definitely some areas where we come together, but other areas where we're diametrically different. Yes, very, very true. So in your opinion, and you gave me permission to call you Doug, so there's, there's a few chiropractic offices out there, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Lots of them, yeah. And, and I'm seeing more and more and more of them. So what makes your office so distinctly unique? Well, I think the fact that we take, we have a, a multidisciplinary facility. So we have chiropractors, we have acupuncture, we have a pedorthus, a foot care specialist, we have massage therapy. So we're very fortunate in the, from the standpoint, from a, a, a natural healthcare approach, we're pretty well equipped. From a chiropractic perspective, we certainly practice traditional chiropractic care, which is manual therapy, hands-on. But we've also incorporated uh, what's called a pro adjuster, which is a computerized adjusting tool. It's a computerized assisted adjusting tool. So, and it gives us a little bit more depth of understanding from a diagnostic perspective, and also provides um, a little bit different therapeutic approach because there's no snapping or cracking, there's no twisting. So it's a high velocity, low amplitude thrust using a, um, as I say, a computer assisted tool or an instrument. Well, you know, I have had the pleasure of being on your pro adjuster. And so I just, I want to tell people, I want to be super, super honest. I am, I have high anxiety <laughs> and, and I think you, you know me fairly well and it's very apparent. And so uh, neck manipulation for me, and probably a little bit more so than the average person because I also have a Western background, I tend to be a little bit more nervous about those things. And so for me to be able to be on something where there is no crack, there is no um, you know, aggressive manipulation, I think there's more people out there. There's a lot of people like me, believe it or not, because I know when I told a few people 
about how comfortable I am coming there, knowing that that this is what I can get, right? Um, for people like me, it took uh, all that anxiety was gone. What I loved most about it too is I think the world now wants to see something visible. I mean, because uh, if you have an adjustment, you may not necessarily feel it right away, right? Correct. But what your equipment does is it gives you a before and after picture. You can see that on screen. So you get to see the differences as well as feel them. You're absolutely and, correct. And so I, and I, I'm probably talking a little bit more about this machine than I, I should. I probably should let you do it. No but I get, I get excited when I talk to people about it because I think it's something that is so needed and works so well. And uh, it's just all around, you know, I, I'm definitely into digital technology. That's what our clinic is all about, being able to have a visible source, right? I just find that people are looking more towards that in, especially nowadays and in the future and what's coming in, in healthcare of all types, right? Whether it's medicine, whether it's alternative, holistic, whatever you want to say, I think this is the direction that people are going to want to see more proof in an instant, right? So I think that you're, you hit it right on the head. One of the beauties of this technology is that it does have a great show and tell component. So it does allow me to scan the spine using the technology and it uses a process called piezoelectric, which is kind of like vibration of vibration back, much like sonar. So what it does is it demonstrates areas of blockage or the resistance and if you have an area of resistance, it usually indicates that there may be an area that's not moving quite the way that it should be in the spine. So it allows us to identify those maybe a little bit more precisely than some other ways. Um, is it a better technology than a manual adjustment? Not at all, but it is a complementary technology. So in other words, for people who have a level of anxiety with regards to manual manipulation, especially with their neck, this allows them to get... I believe, effective chiropractic care for the neck without the need for a manual manipulation. So that helps a lot. And there's some people that really just shouldn't be adjusted as far as their neck goes. People with high levels of, uh, of arthritic change or people with circulatory disturbances, other things. I mean, there's lots of other examples that I could provide you, but kids, for example, it's wonderful for, for young kids who, again, maybe a little bit you know, wary or a little bit concerned about a manual manipulation. So yeah, it does, it provides us with a very valuable tool. So what age group um, can actually have this type of therapy? With uh, chiropractic, you mean, or pro Yeah, you mentioned sure. children, and a lot of people don't think of the fact that they could actually, I have a hair somewhere, they could actually do this with a child. So, I mean, it would be nice to know that. Well, if you think about it, at what other time in our lives do we are we more susceptible to bumps and bruises than when we're kids? None, of course. And at what other time is the body growing? So as it's growing, it's developing. So if it's developing, and it's developing on a basically sound platform. So in other words, there's balance. Everything on the right-hand side is working like it is on the left-hand side. Then what happens is, just like a tree, it grows straight. But if you have an area, as a result of, injuries or postural alterations and we could certainly talk lots about that especially in our society where the 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 tree or the twig is not necessarily growing the way that it's designed to over time what could happen is that could end up being a structural fault that follows that child into adulthood and serves as a form of insult which could create a lifetime of problems going forward you see so yeah. as far as kids the youngest I've ever adjusted a child was 13 hours. When I, oh. the gal <laughs> gave birth to her daughter and it was a traumatic birth and she brought her in to me for an evaluation because she was an ongoing patient of mine. She just wanted to make sure that everything with the child, because the, as I say, it was a high force sense delivery, which can be quite traumatic. And so we examined the child and we did a little bit of light fingertip work everything was fine and not that everything wasn't fine before but she just felt that it was necessary to make sure that the sub the child's spine was in fact intact and functioning 
That's amazing. 13 hours. <laughs> yeah, isn't that wild? <laughs> that is, that's incredible, but good for you. That's, Thank you. That's incredible. So um, do you see the pro, pro adjuster as safer than another tool? You know, it, it, there is no technical downside to the, to the pro adjuster. I mean, the, it, the, the fact that it, it's a very low amplitude, which means that the thrust it provides is very shallow, but it's very precise. So it doesn't need a lot of force to create movement sometimes. So traditional chiropractic manipulation is very, very safe in itself. In fact, there's greater likelihood of being struck by lightning than there is. The big issue with chiro, of course, concern is stroke. There's actually greater likelihood of you being struck by lightning than there is of you having a stroke in a chiropractor's office. And I think it's important that your listeners and your viewers understand that, that a lot of the bugaboo about chiropractic manipulation of the neck is literally that. It was fabricated. It had nothing to do with reality. Now, is there always a downside to any therapeutic intervention? Of course there is. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, the, whether it be aspirin or chiropractic or any other intervention of any sort, whether it be medical or physical or whatever, there could be a potential downside. That's always, uh, that's always something that has to be a concern. But if the practitioner does his or her job properly, screens the patients appropriately, does the right preparatory work to make sure that the tissues are conditioned properly to accept an adjustment, the likelihood of injury is, oh my gosh, it's so negligible. You know, one thing that always astonished me is that um, having worked in the medical field for so long and working with physicians, um, I, you know, you know what their educational level is and, and you know what they study but a lot of people never really understand what a chiropractor does. And I think that's a really important topic for us to cover today that, that you know, it's very similar actually, right? To not similar in what you're studying, but very similar in the length of time it takes for you to get through university, um, to cover your specialty in chiropractic. Um, you know, I found out that chiropractors study radiology. You know, that was surprising to me that you actually have that ability. And uh, so maybe we could talk a little bit about that and, and give people a bit of a sense of um, just exactly how qualified you are with human anatomy, right? Well, thanks, Lynn. And, you know, I think that certainly when it comes to the treatment of musculoskeletal injuries, which are injuries involving the physical body, I don't believe that there's anybody better qualified. Um, I have an undergraduate degree as well as, I have three years of undergraduate degree, four years chiropractic college. Um, it's the same, it's roughly the same length of time as it takes to become a doctor or a dentist or an optometrist. Um, the specialty is there. We take a lot of the same courses that the other, this, the other health disciplines take. Uh, core anatomy, physiology, histology, pathology. The idea being, of course, that it's important from a diagnostic perspective to be able to differentiate patients that are appropriate for chiropractic care or patients that may be better suited for other types of therapy. And I think that's one of the things that makes us very unique because I do believe that chiros, from a differential diagnosis perspective, probably do a better job than a lot of other professions do in being able to recognize that something belongs chiropractic or something else belongs in a medical or in a or physiotherapeutic or whatever other profession that may be better suited to that particular patient's needs. So from a uh, education standpoint, yeah, okay, we're right up there with them. In fact, a lot of the professors that teach at uh, the Canadian Chiropractic College in Toronto also teach at other, you know, the, the surrounding medical schools within the, uh, the greater GTA area. Yeah, and it's amazing because I, I talk to my friends a lot about the different modalities, right? Because, um, you know, in my uh, circle of friends, my social circle, uh, a lot of people aren't into the um, holistic side of things, right? So when you get into conversations, I'm always surprising them. <laughs> and, and 
So it's nice to be having these talks to get to talk with professionals like yourself, where we get a chance to actually let people know, because usually when I, I have to admit, when, the first time I went to a chiropractic office, I didn't interview him. I didn't get a chance to say, well, what is what is your background? What is your education? I was in pain. I'd been in a motor vehicle accident and I, I needed relief. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, there has to be this element of trust. Right. And I think sometimes the fear comes from the lack of education. Right. Um, it it's we don't know what we don't know. And I think it's important that we get an opportunity to see these things and, and get somebody like yourself that's willing to come on onto a platform like this and, and let everybody learn about it. So, Doug, in your opinion, how do you see things going over the next five to 10 years? Well, you know, that's a very interesting question because COVID is kind of throwing a screw into everything. Mm -hmm. it's, gonna, it's a different world now, and it's going to be a different world going forward. Yes. Um, whether we like it or not, we are, mankind is now the sickest species on the planet. I mean, even independent of COVID, if you were to look at our profile, compare it to any other species on the planet, you would say that mankind is heading for extinction. As I mentioned beforehand, we take more medications, we have more diet, more chronic diseases, we have more inter more medical and more healthcare interventions than ever before in history. The human species is becoming sicker by virtue of lifestyle. And that's where people said, with your specialty, because I think you're gonna find going forward that people are gonna to start to understand the importance of maintaining health rather than fighting disease. Because fighting disease doesn't get you really anywhere. Ultimately, it'll hold fighting disease will often just get you sicker because of the fact that if, you're, if you don't take care of what's caused you to get sick in the first place, unfortunately, you're going to become more predisposed to other illnesses going forward. So I think you're going to find people changing their attitudes towards healthcare and looking for much more proactive approaches. Proactive meaning approaches that are going to be able to maintain their health and in doing so, allow them to inherently to fight off disease, whether it be COVID or whatever it is that comes down the pipe next. Another thing is we have to come to grips with the issue of obesity. Obesity in our society is rampant and it is one of the major contributors to a whole raft of different disease processes. Everything from arthritis to metabolic syndrome to fatty liver to a whole raft of other things are simply as a result of the fact that we are far heavier as a society now than we've ever been in history. If you were to take a look at a photograph of people, a group of people in the 1950s, it would amaze you because most of them are pretty skinny. Yes. Now, if you were to take a, a picture of a group of people in 2020, what you're going to find is most of them are pretty heavy. So we have to kind of understand that health, just like any other facet of our existence, is very much an issue of personal accountability. And personal accountability means understanding that there are professionals and there are tools out there that are designed to keep you healthy, but none of that will come out of a pill bottle. Absolutely. It, it, it's funny that you brought this up. I'll give you an example. So I met some friends today and they were talking about a case of somebody who had edema, which is swelling, right? Um, terrific swelling in their ankles and, and legs went to emergency. Um, and had every test you can possibly imagine done. Everything was negative. So the next thing we do is we just put them on medication, right? Um, but we still don't know what's causing it. And I, I really, I have an issue with that. So it, I, I'm just saying, if that was my husband, um, I would want to know what's causing it. And I would not <laughs> accept that they haven't found it yet. It means that they haven't done the thing that's going to find it, right? And you well, and you're, you're absolutely correct. So people are asking more questions. One thing I want your, your, your viewers to understand too is I'm not bashing medicine at all. No, okay? me neither. I think that, that and the need for medications is really important. I mean, medications save thousands and millions of lives absolutely. every year. 100%. What I am saying is though that once you've hopefully dealt with what it is that you need to deal with, deal with from a medication standpoint, I think we have to start to mature and realize, okay, if I got sick, 
I got the medication I needed to deal with the condition that I was facing, but now maybe I should turn to other professionals better equipped to get me healthy, healthy, Absolutely. which is an interesting thing, you know? So rather than, as I mentioned, fighting disease, we really do have to turn this paradigm around so that it's much more focused on prevention. Prevention, and I don't mean prevention, meaning getting your flu shot. I mean prevention and finding different ways to improve the vitality of the species. Yes, yeah. We need to realize too that the body is more than just flesh and blood, right? And, you know, there's, um, I believe that we all vibrate at different frequencies. I've talked about this a lot. And we need to vibrate um, at the right frequencies, right? So we need to look at the energetic um, side of our being as well, right? It's, it's more than just one thing. So oh, man, right. 100%. And really, even if you look at life as we know it and you dial it down to its purest form, it's nothing more than energy. Yes. It's yeah. nothing more than energy. So there is obviously some sort of divine intelligence that, that, that works to somehow organize this. But at the end of the day, everything is nothing more than energy in one form or another. And that's what really defines us from a life, from a, from a living standpoint as well, is how well your vitality is a measure of how well your body produces and utilizes energy. So health is absolutely a reflection of that same ability. So really what we do is we have to start to create human beings that are much more energy efficient, energy dominant. So they're allowed to have all of their various systems that comprise the body work at, at maximum levels of efficiency. You see, the human body was never designed to be sick. Huh? If you yeah. look at most species, they rarely get sick. Species other, other than the ones we've domesticated and kind of screwed up in the process. But if you look at species in the wild, usually they stay healthy till close to the end of days. So, and I believe mankind was designed with that too. I think that that we make ourselves sick in very many ways. But anyway, that's topic for another. <laughs> but it's so true. It, it's um, we have a lot to do with whether we're healthy or not. Because I have to admit that I go off track sometimes. I, I think it's human sometimes, right? To, you know, last week I devoured a whole bar of organic chocolate, and, mm -hmm. and I told myself it was okay because it was organic, right? <laughs> We all suffer and, the same and, vices. You but it's still chocolate, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so, and that's okay. But if, if you're doing that every day, right, you're going to suffer the consequences, right? And, and I, I think, you know, the days of believing that we can just rely on our diet to give our body what it needs are over because our soil quality is gone. Um, we're being bombarded with environment and toxins every day. So I think these types of modalities, because we're going to have more bone problems, or skeletal problems, we're going to have more inflammations, right? Because of what we're eating, what, because of the hormones in our meat, because of the chemicals and preservatives that are in what we're ingesting every day. We're going to need more people like you. We're going to need massage therapists. We're going to need more preventative healthcare practitioners like myself who, you know, have studied foods and know what foods are high in molds and which ones can create more inflammation. These are things that, that we all need to work together. And we, and I keep telling people, and I hope to tell people every week, these are affordable things. We tend to think they're not, um, we can't afford them. But the problem is if we don't start putting our health first instead of our entertainment um, or uh, whatever else we think is important um, instead of our health, without our health, we have none of those things. Absolutely. None of them are attainable. So it should be a priority. So I want to thank you so much um, for, for being here for a lot of people today. A lot of people are gonna be viewing this today, in the future, possibly now. Um, and we just wanna make sure that we let you know that um, it means a lot to us. It means a lot to those people out there that are looking for help in this area. Can you tell us, um, you know, how somebody contacts your office, what you have available in your office? Because it's, I know it's more than just the chiropractors, just so that they know and what the process is to get hold of you. Well, thank you very much. Um, you can get us, get us on our website, so it's Care Chiropractic. 
um, dot com, or you can get us uh, by phone, 519-633-1444. We're, uh, we're located on Wellington Street in St. Thomas, and it's really easy to get to. Um, from a service perspective, we have uh, chiropractic. We have uh, four chiropractors that uh, operate out of our clinic. And we have uh, three massage therapists. We have a pedorthist, as I mentioned, and we offer acupuncture as well. And we have a, a full service gym in the lower level. So yeah, we're pretty well equipped. We don't have a real good naturopathic or a real good uh, um, dietary therapist yet, but I'm looking at one right now. So I can you see just that, keep sending so, them to me. <laughs> that's my babe. I, I've never had a problem with that. That's so awesome. anyway, that, that's our day. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. And uh, just to remind you, this is a different kind of better clinic. My name is Lynn Weems. We are myself and Dr. Tom. We are a clinic that works with uh, vibrational energy and with digital equipment called a digital information analysis. So we're on Facebook. We can be reached at a different kind of better.com or a different kind of better on Facebook. So have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. Cooley. We really appreciate it. Take care. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Lynn. Take care. Bye-bye.